Hello everyone. In this video, we will start with three-stage ring oscillator. Let's begin. As shown in the figure, if these three stages are identical, then the total phase shift around the lobe that is phi reaches minus 135 degree. At omega is equals to omega p, where omega p f this p omega p f is equals to omega p g. Okay, and it reaches to minus 270 degree at frequency of infinity, and consequently phi reaches minus 180 degree at omega less than infinity, where the loop gain can be still greater or it is equal to unity. Okay, now neglect the effect of gate, drain, overlap, capacitance, and let us denote the transfer function of E stage by minus A naught upon 1 plus S omega naught. Uh, we are using three stages and they both are in product. So the gain of first stage is minus A naught upon 1 plus S omega naught. The gain of second stage and third stage is also same. So thus we have for the loop gain is equals to minus a naught whole cube as they are both are in products okay upon 1 plus s omega naught whole cube okay now we can find that the circuit oscillate only if the frequency dependent phase shift is equals to 180 degree this is given by a Parkinson criteria that if the phase shift is equals to 180 degree then only the circuit oscillates that is if each stage contributes 60 degree, okay, we want total phase shift to be equal to 180 degree. So each stage will contribute 60 degree. Thus, 10 inverse omega oscillation upon omega naught is equal to 60 degree. This is the easiest way to find the phase shift of this particular open loop gain. That is 10 inverse omega oscillation upon omega naught is equal to 60, which is given by omega oscillation is will be equal to root 3 of omega naught. So this is the frequency okay at which this oscillates now let us find the minimum voltage gain which is required per stage as we have already seen it is given by the barkison criteria that the loop gain at omega oscillation should be equal to unity so this gain that is a naught q upon root of one plus omega oscillation upon omega naught whole square whole cube of this whole square root is equal to one and solving this particular equation, keeping this omega oscillation as under root 3 omega naught, we will get A naught is equal to 2. Okay. Three stage ring oscillator requires a low frequency gain of 2 per stage and it will oscillate at a frequency of omega naught root 3 omega naught and where this omega naught is the 3 dB bandwidth of each stage. Okay, now examine the waveform at the three nodes of the oscillator of above figure and we can see that since each stage contribute at a frequency dependent phase shift of 60 degree, so as well, so low frequency as well as low frequency signal inversion, the waveform at each node is 240 degree or we can say 120 degree out of phase with respect to its neighboring node. Okay. So they are 120 degree out of phase with the respective its neighboring node. Okay. And the ability to regenerate multiple phases is a very useful property of this ring oscillator. Okay. So it is a waveform of a three-stage ring oscillator at various nodes that is V, VF, VG. We can see that these waveforms are 240 degree out of phase with its neighboring node. Now let us analyze linear model of three stage ring oscillators. Okay, it is shown in the figure there are three stages which are used in the ring oscillator and the open loop gain is given by minus A naught whole cube upon 1 plus S upon omega naught whole cube and the closed loop transfer function will be equal to V out S upon V in S which is equals to minus A naught whole cube upon 1 plus S upon omega naught whole cube upon 1 plus a naught cube upon 1 plus s omega naught whole cube. Okay, this is simply hs upon 1 plus hs. Okay, solving this equation we will get minus a naught whole cube upon 1 plus x by 
omega naught whole cube plus a naught cube and the closed loop exhibits three poles and this particular denominator can be expanded using the formula of this a cube plus b cube and it can be written as a plus b that is 1 plus s omega naught plus a naught and in another bracket 1 plus s omega naught whole square minus 1 plus s omega naught a naught let me write this so this denominator can be written as 1 plus s omega naught plus a naught 1 plus s omega naught whole square to the minus 1 plus s upon omega naught a naught plus a naught square. Okay, so this is simply formula a plus b in bracket, in another bracket, bracket open a square minus a b plus b square. Okay, so it is a simple formula to write for a cube plus b cube. Okay, now this closed loop system exhibit three poles. You can see, and this is a simple equation, and this is a quadratic equation. We can find the value of this poles. Okay, so the first pole is S1 is given by this equation which is equal to minus A0 minus 1 in brackets omega naught and another pole will be equals to that is a pair of complex pole that is S23 will be given as A0 1 plus minus J omega root 3 upon 2 minus 1 whole omega naught. Okay, since this A0 is positive as we have already calculated the value of A0 that is the gain per stage which will be equal to 2. So the pole S1 leads to a decaying exponential term that is exponent of minus A0 minus 1 omega naught t which can be neglected in the second steady state. Okay, so this term can be neglected in the steady state. Now let us analyze the location of these two poles and let us see that this circuit will oscillate and how it will oscillate with respect to these two poles. Okay, now let us see the poles of three stage ring oscillator. It is given in the figure which illustrates the location of the poles for different values of A0. Okay, so it reveals that for A0 greater than 2, okay, the two complex poles exhibit a positive real part. Okay, hence it gives rise to a growing sinusoid. And neglecting the effect of this S, we express the output waveform as V out is equal to A exponent A0 minus 2 upon 2 omega naught cos a naught root 3 upon 2 omega naught t. Okay. And thus for a naught less than 2, this will have a these two poles will lie in the this negative half that is the left half. And for a naught equals to 2, these two complex pair pole will lie on the imaginary axis. Okay. So in practice, this oscillation amplitude increases this, as the oscillation amplitude increases, the stages in the single path experience nonlinearity and eventually saturation, which will limit the maximum amplitude. And if this small signal loop gain is greater than unity, then the circuit must span this enough time in saturation so that the average loop gain is still equal to unity. Okay, so it is shown that for this particular case for having this a naught greater than 2 or a naught equal to 2 the circuit is unstable and it will produce an oscillation okay for a circuit to oscillate we require that the open loop gain per stage that is this gain per stage should be greater than equal to 2 okay and it is shown by using this bold diagram okay so this is all about three stage ring oscillator Thank you.